process. And you see that we have an example in the scripture I believe is very appropriate for today of the prodigal. And, and this is a word for somebody, so listen closely. The prodigal, in the beginning of the, the example, didn't realize what he had. But he didn't know that he didn't realize that. He was just doing his thing, living his life. He didn't realize how good he had it in the place he was in. So, as he looked around at the world around him, he began to see that, or began to think that maybe the grass is greener on the other side, so to speak. He began to see the world around him, that some people had what he didn't have, or some people were doing things he wasn't doing, or you know, he was tired of being in this position, and he wanted more, or whatever, you know, whatever thoughts went through his mind. We can place ourselves there in many different facets of our life, whether it be spiritually, financially, or our health, whatever the case. So, so as we know, as the account goes, that he demanded his portion from his father because he wanted to do things his way. He felt he had a better plan, a better understanding of the direction of his life, or let's just face it, sometimes we live our life and we just flat out reject God's way. There are times in our life, and I've been guilty of it myself, where I didn't really want to be around the presence of God because I didn't want to hear. Right. Right. Because I already knew. Yeah. That's right. And uh, so, so he he finds himself out, as you know, out there doing his own thing, doing it his way, and then he ends up, as the scripture tells us, finding himself in a position where he lost everything. And he ends up eating what the pigs are eating. I mean, he's getting ready to eat what the pigs are eating. Right. And uh, and he comes to himself. You know, a lot of times in life, when we try to figure things out, we have this word, we, we, we aha, you know. Aha. A-H-A. -A. <laughs> Awareness, honesty, and action. Straight into the process. See, a lot of times in our life, moments like this where God's moving, and there's a peaceful presence here, we become aware of our condition. Maybe you were aware before you even got in this place. You were aware that you weren't in the position that you wanted to be in, or maybe you weren't in the position that you once was. You remember a time when things were better. You remember a time when you were more at peace. Remember a time when you had more joy in your life. But see, while you were in it, you didn't even realize how good it was. Because you haven't had your awkward experience yet. But then here's the thing. We become aware of the condition we're in. It's that light bulb moment. Like this, this person had. He, he became aware of the situation he found himself in. But well, becoming aware isn't enough. Right. Desire is not enough. You can desire a thing, you can want a thing, but you have to surrender to the process. So what began to happen after he was aware of the situation he was actually in, the reality of the situation he was actually in, he did begin to be honest with himself. And he said, man, I used to have it so good. Man, even the servants at my father's house live better than this. And I had all that at my disposal. <coughs> a lot of times, we just simply need to continue the process and be honest with ourselves because so many times, it's actually, I think it's just human nature that we want to blame everything else and everyone else on the position that we find ourselves in. If they would have only, or if this would have only, we have to be honest with ourselves, and, and we have to begin to take responsibility for the place we find ourselves in. Right. Yeah. Even a lot of times we want to blame God. Yeah. Even, even maybe not even directly blaming Him, but by our actions and our inner thoughts, and sometimes by the words we speak, we betray ourselves, and we actually 
if we'd be honest with ourselves, blame God for the position we find ourselves in. Because He didn't do what we thought He should have done when He should have done it because we were ready for the moment to happen and it didn't happen, so right. then yeah. That's it. we just threw our hands up and said, oh well, right. honesty. Honesty with ourself. Yes. I'm the reason I'm not closer to God than I should be. I'm the reason I lost that job. I'm the reason my finances are, are a mess. I'm the reason that these things are happening. I'm the reason that women continue to leave, leave me. I'm the reason that men can't stand me. I'm the reason that I can't carry on a relationship. I'm the reason. Surrender to the process. <laughs> Become aware of where you're at. Be honest with the situation. And then you have to take action. You see, in, in the example we have of the prodigal, many of us know the situation. and He didn't just stay in his self-pity. He didn't just stay in that honest moment. See, a lot of times we, when we come to those moments, we'll be honest with ourselves, but then we stay there, and then yeah. staying there leads to depression. All right. yeah. Staying there leads to anger. Right. Yeah. Staying there leads to bitterness. Right. Staying there leads to oppression. Right. Yeah. We have to surrender to the process. So it's good that you have awakened to your moment. It's good that you're aware of it. It's good that you're honest about it. But you can't stay there. You have to take action. So this young man picked himself up. Stood up. Let the chains fall. He was bound to his situation, but he decided to stand up let the chains fall. He took the risk of coming back to Father's house. He took the risk of coming back to where he started. Yes. And there are times when we start well. We've acknowledged the calling that God has given us in this life. We've acknowledged why He created us to be in this earth. And then we walk away from it. But if you want to take action, take the risk to come back to what He called you to. As we know, the prodigal was very, very concerned how his father would react. But his father was just simply wanting to come back. So today, if that's you, as we continue on with this service, as we continue on to hear the word that's going to come forth today, take action. come back. Come back to where you started. Allow God to rekindle that fire again. Allow God to rekindle that calling in your life. Allow God to give you joy again. Peace, peace again. Fulfillment again. Fulfillment, peace, joy. Be able to wake up every morning and say, I'm right where I need to be. There's no better, I mean, I'm right where I need to be. I'm doing what I need to do. I look forward to this day. I'm going to stop there because I want to kind of continue. If, if, Lord willing, I want to continue this subject next week. About, about these aha moments we have in our life. Amen. Where that light bulb clicks. Out back. Well, see, I said I was going to. But how, I'll leave you with this. How bad. How dark. How dark does it have to get in your life? Right. Before you have your That's right. aha moment. Right. 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 Hallelujah. Sing.
say a quick prayer before we transition today. Father, we thank you for this moment. We know that you're in this place and there's things you're wanting to do. Lord, we surrender to you today. We ask for your will to be done. We open our hearts up. We open ourselves up to you and say, have your will. Lord, speak through our pastor today, God, as we know you have already inspired him. You have already stirred him. Your spirit is already at work in him today. I pray that prophetically he would flow under your anointing and under your guiding hand, Lord, as he ministers to the congregation here in this place. We have many people here today that are searching and looking and wanting more of you. They, they understand that this is the place they need to be, and they came here for a reason, Lord. We pray that that would be fulfilled in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, if you